Okay, we're going to look at how to solve for volume, okay? So, when we're talking about volume, we're actually talking about a three-dimensional shape, okay? Volume has, like, our world three dimensions to it, okay? And they usually refer to them as the length, the width, and uh, what do you guys use? Depth or height? Height? Okay. HD. <laughs> okay, I'll come up with that. Um, a lot of times they represent these as like the letter L, but like in cursive, letter W in cursive, and the letter H in cursive. Okay? It doesn't even have to be. You can just write it in like this. It doesn't matter. We're just using, instead of writing the whole word out. To find the volume of something like this, you actually have to multiply the length of every side. So these are all the, let's call them the lengths. Maybe these are the widths and these are the heights. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of highlight them across here so we know. That's our width and that's our length. Okay, a lot of times they'll ask us to label it and that's where writing just one letter in comes really handy. Maybe I'll call this the L, this is the W, and this is the H. So in order to do this, the formula is the volume, they'll use the letter V, is equal to length times width times height. And sometimes I'm going to say volume of a rectangular prism. I put like, that's called a subscript, where you write little letters to the bottom right, and it's just telling us the volume of what? Because there's lots of different volume formulas. Like the volume of a, of a sphere or like a large circle, like a soccer ball, is uh -huh. not the same. Okay, so this is the volume of a rectangular prism, really, really specific. Okay. Um, so if they had given us like the numbers two, three, and four, that's probably not the scale. All I would do is I'd say the volume of the rectangular prism, and you don't have to write those little RPNs. I'm just doing it so it reminds us. Um, well, the length, I replace length with the number two, okay? And what color do I have? I had red, so I'm gonna say that's two. We do the width with three, and I did the height at four, and I just gotta multiply these numbers together, okay? So 2 times 3 will give me 6, and then 6 times 4 gives me 24. This is 24, and I don't have anything like centimeters or meters or inches, so I'm just going to say cubic units, because whatever it is, it's always technically cubed, okay? But I wrote the word in cubic units. I could have said units cubed. That's another way of writing it, okay? I'm going to go to a question now. We're going to make up a question here. Very same idea. We have here. It's gonna look a little different this one. Let's say it looks like this. I'm not so good at this part. There we go. Oh, I did that pretty well. I'm so impressed with myself. Let's say that this is the base of something, okay? And the base is actually This here is equal to 20 um, units. Or you could say like little cubes, right? But that's 20 units. That entire base is 20 units, okay? And if you notice, I've actually split it up. If we count them, one, two, three, four, five, and then this one goes one, two, three, four, which is really nice. So technically, this is five it's four. times four. And what is five times four? 20. Perfect. So what they've told us is they've told us the, I um, can't remember what colors I used. It's better if I use it. Red and blue. Okay. This is red. This was the width. Nope. Length. There you go. The width I said in blue. Okay, so I'll count those in blue. This was the width. They told us the base of this thing. Okay. Um, they already told us what it was. Um, and in this question, they're going to tell us that the Height is uh, three and leave it a quarter, three and a half units high. Okay, I know that's not quite what it looks like. If it's three and a half units high, so we know that the volume of a rectangular prism is equal to the length times the width times the height. 
But they've told us 20. What, what is 20? Is that the length? Is that the width? Is that the height? Well, what is that? It's the, it's the length and the width. So what they've done for us, okay, they've actually multiplied those two together already. 20 replaces both of those letters. So it's 20 times 3. Ah, very good. So it's 20, okay, I'll write it in yellow, since it replaces the length and the width. three and a half. Yeah, and times the three and a half units. Now, I don't have a calculator. 23 and a half. Mm, oh, not quite. 20 oh, has to oh, be multiplied by 3, um, and it has to be multiplied by half. So, 60, three twenties. 16 and a half. Uh, so, we have, we'll write it on the side here. So, 3 times 20, it gives us our 60 units. But here's another thing. A half times 20. That's half times 20. Another way I can say this is, what is a half of 20? Half of 20 is 10. Ah, it's 10 units. So when I add these two together, what's 60 plus 10 units? 70. 70 units. Though I did not spell units right up. Oh, yeah, it's a plus, that's why. I'm like, why does that look so, why is there a T at the end? So we actually get 70 units cubed. The other way you can make sense of this is I can turn that into a decimal if I'm going to use a calculator or maybe I'm used to doing um, multiplication in a very standard way. So I'd say 20 times, well, a half is technically 0.5. So that's the same as saying 3.5. And now I'm going to use um, my, yeah, so I'm going to go 5 times 0, 0, 5 times 2. Is ten, and then I write my zero in here. Five times two. Three times. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then three times zero is zero. Three times two is six. Plus. Zero zero seven, but there's one decimal, and I got seven. seventy. Okay, so I could have done it by fractions. I could have done it by decimals. Either way, but when you multiply, you got to multiply by the whole units and the half units. Okay. Um, okay.